Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everyone. Finny here from Finny's Homebrew Emporium on a really long bike. Look at that. Those ages. And we're in a bit of Kiwiana, I guess, brewing history. It's the Tui building. Just there. And going some, through some repairs. And then you can see the new brewery is there. So we just had a, a six pack of the uh, tasting tray. And two of them actually worked. But yeah, pretty cool. There's been a lot of beer made here over the years. It's a bit windy, so I'll cut this short. But yeah, very interesting to see. But no idea what the bike's about. So as you can see, I'm at the front. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. And the poor buggers at the back, there's only three, like these last three seats. It's the only place you can pedal. Look. Frank the tank. <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool to see. Not bumped into any two wee girls yet though. Yeah, so that was fun. And um, it we we managed to get there because we were on the way to uh, Mount uh, sorry, the Tongariro crossing, which is uh, one of the great walks in, in New Zealand, and um, when you walk on volcanoes. So here's a little bit of footage from me walking up a volcano, um, and then you'll see the, the emergency I guess beacon, or like the thing it tells you. Ah, oh, yeah. you'll all see what I mean. Just in case you want to know, if you should walk on the track, this light will flash. <laughs> Here's a view from the other side. Yeah, so quite interesting to see, you know, the the, the, the landscape around there is just amazing. It's, um, really cool place to go walk. So if you do get the chance, uh, go and do it. So <coughs> the oh, what else? Ah, oh, yeah, the Great Kiwi Beer Festival um, was on in Christchurch not too long ago, um, and we went along. So here's a li little, like, s small f um, snippet of. Gives you a sense of see how many people are there in the atmosphere. Um, there you go. See, the event was awesome. Um, really good to see some some um, some of the breweries that made a bit of an effort and made some sort of extra beers to, to bring along. Um, standout beers for me are the Unchained Eight Wide beer it was phenomenal. It's a barrel aged IPA, so good. Um, and Mike Mike's had done a, a sour strawberry porter, I think it was, uh, which again was was a great beer. Um, Definite theme there with the, the sour beers. Uh, and um, uh, was well, a garage project had a very nice um, bastard rye ale, um, which was all good. I think all of them were pretty strong beers, so that's probably why they, <laughs> they tasted so good. Um, and I, um, I had a little part to play in the whole thing. I did a, a talk on homebrew um, in the sober tent. So that was good. Here's a picture of me next to it. Yeah, so all in all, um, a, a good event. Um, hopefully it will continue again next year. Um, and they get some better bands because <laughs> it's the only bit that sort of lets it down. But fingers crossed it keeps going with the good weather. Uh, they've been We've been pretty lucky so far, all four years. Um, it's had good weather, so it was good. It's good, um, just really nice, relaxed event. You know, plenty of space out in the sunshine but not too hot which is I think is a good is a good way to go about it because uh, otherwise if it's too hot people drinking you know 10% beers they're just gonna 
they're going to struggle pretty fast. Um, so well done to them. Um, what else be going on? Um, the fresh hot beers are in the cakes, um, and they're all right. Uh, the pale ale, um, I keep trying it and going, oh, is it good? Is it not good? It's, I think it's what a, probably a, a fresh hot pale ale should be. But I think the problem that we've had uh, with the two beers is that it's just Nelson Savin, um, <clears throat> whilst the the one I did the pale ale had um, some of my own hops in. They're still the pretty much first year hot, so they don't have the punch that they probably need to sort of play alongside the Nelson Savin. So it's very heavily dominated by by it. and because of the amount you're chucking in, um, it seems to be picking up <coughs> some sort of vegetable notes as well. So I was getting sort of diesely vegetable sort of aromatics, but I guess that's in keeping with the hop. So uh, whether it's good or not, I don't know. Um, I might still just bottle up three of them and uh, and send them up to the comp that Brutopia is having um, just to see you know see their thoughts on it as well really um, yeah so fingers crossed they go alright um, next up um, I'll leave well I'll leave you uh, with a beer review uh, this is from a guy called Steve that comes in the shop who's also got a YouTube video uh, thing so I'll give send a link and uh, sorry put a link on it and and I put it in the, the notes. Um, <clears throat> but go and check him out, he's got a pretty cool system and uh, the way he's doing it and his kegerator is to die for. Um, so thanks Steve for the beer uh, and here is my ramblings on it. See you all next week, hopefully. Alrighty, time for a beer review. So this beer here is um, a beer I was given by Steve who is Steve... wait, I can do this. Steve James Bar, um, Bar with double R, um, if you're looking on YouTube, who's got a little channel, um, who has been to the, the shop a couple of times, and Steve's just started getting into all grain. Um, he's got quite an interesting setup, actually, you should go and have a look um, and how he, how he does that. But this is his pumpkin ale, which we had quite a long discussion on in the shop. Um, it's good. I definitely get. It must ah, it's the ginger on the nose. It must. I've been trying to pick it all night. I think it's ginger on the nose. I'm really getting through. Um, but as you can see, it's beautiful. Good looking beer. The head on it's been sticking around all night. It's great. I'm halfway through the bottle he gave me. It's still, still looking really good. Um, and the the. I think it's got it quite right. You know those spices there, like when you when you think of pumpkin spice ales, um, it's definitely the spices that, that are coming that you normally that come through, um, and it's good. Yeah, I like it. It's got um, it's definitely got all that spice character. There's the pumpkin for me. It's hard to pick out in a, as a taste in the beer unless you like you know throw loads in, um, but I think it's got it quite right. It it adds a lot of body. I did a pumpkin porter ages ago, um, that whilst didn't taste of pumpkin, because um, I used it in the mash. I don't think I used it in the boil, um, and it just added loads of body to this pumpkin port to the porter, and it was actually really good. Um, when I rebrewed it afterwards without the pumpkin. And it wasn't quite the same beer, so it's interesting to to taste. Hmm, it's quite interesting the um, smelling the beer and tasting the beer. They're quite different. The smell is quite dominated by the um, by the ginger, whereas the taste, well, a bit of the malt comes through, and um, all the rest of the flavors come through, and the the ginger doesn't quite dominate as much. Um, so it's an interesting. Um, interesting beer in that respect but you know to be fair Steve I think looking at this thing he may have done three or four all grain beers um, his next one should be a doozy because he came in the shop the other day and bought all the um, ingredients for like an imperial brown or something like that so good luck with that one Steve I hope it turns out well because it will certainly certainly look good on paper um, but, um, yeah I'm going to sit and enjoy the rest of this and uh, Go and check him out, Steve James. Uh, Steve James Bar. It's all all in one go. 
um, with a double R. Um, go and check his channel out and see how this guy brews. <clears throat> so, if you've been following me since the start, this, the cock ale, um, was the first thing I did on my YouTube channel. Back in April last year, um, I joined the YouTube community, um, and yeah, showed everyone how to make a beer with KFC. Um, so this um, is, I've got two bottles left. So it was bottled 28th of the 4th, 2014. So in two weeks time, it will be a year old in the bottle. Um, but as it's the anniversary of my um, YouTube debut, I thought I'll crack one. So. Hopefully it's not a gusher, because, anyway, no, little is. There's a bottle opener when you need one. One moment. So it hasn't got much head. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can smell from here that it's oxidised. Hmm. There you go. As an experiment. Chicken aroma will drop out over time. It's oxidised. Um, I mean, you can see it's dead flat as well. No, oh, what a letdown! Thought it was going to be still going with its aromatics of chicken. Ah, oh, well, what an anticlimax! Oh, well, there it is. If you want to know how to make uh, a beer with chicken, uh, then. Go back to my first video uh, and see how it how it's done. <laughs>